In the 1960s and 70s, El Salvador was ruled by a military regime that controlled its people with intimidation and violence. For most of this period, the bishops of the Catholic Church gave tacit support to the dictatorship. In March 1977, Archbishop Oscar Romero began to speak out against the government violence. His leadership of El Salvador's Catholics shifted the Salvadoran Church from a policy of supporting the dictatorship to a focus on defending the poor. Romero's legacy of support for human rights and social justice lives on in the Catholic Church to this day. In the 1960s and 70s, the vast majority of El Salvadorans lived in abject poverty. More than 95% of the wealth was controlled by less than 2% of the population. The country was ruled by a military dictatorship that enacted policies to perpetuate the privilege of the upper classes and suppressed any dissent through violence. This period was marked with escalating bloodshed and instability. Left-wing groups supporting the oppressed rural poor rallied against the right-wing government. In response, security forces and government death squads assassinated and tortured unionists, labor organizers, and protesters. The hierarchy of the Catholic Church gave tacit support to the government by refusing to condemn the dictatorship's violent policies and preaching acceptance of the established social order. Many of the Salvadoran bishops came from the upper classes and felt there was no reason to involve the church in a conflict between the government and the people. The church was aligned with the aims and methods of the ruling families of El Salvador, Helen May Eaton, author of Oscar Romero and the Struggle for Liberation, wrote. Individual Jesuits and parish priests supported the poor and left-wing dissenters, but their efforts, lacking coordination and official support, were largely in vain. Luis Chavez y Gonzalez, the Archbishop of San Salvador and the country's highest-ranking clergyman, approved the creation of a government censorship office and wrote pastoral letters condemning government critics as communists. On February 3, 1977, the Vatican replaced the aging Chavez with Bishop Oscar Romero. Oscar Romero was a quiet, bookish priest from the rural south. Because of his conservative politics and privileged background, his appointment was welcomed by the dictatorship. Violence escalated across the country during the first few weeks of Romero's time as archbishop. In February 1977, protesters gathered in San Salvador to protest election fraud and voter intimidation. Security forces opened fire on the crowd, killing as many as 1,500 civilians. The military declared a state of siege and suspended civil liberties. Government-sanctioned death squads killed hundreds in the countryside. Despite the increasing level of violence, Romero maintained the church's silence. Then, on March 12, 1977, Government soldiers ambushed radical labor organizer Father Retio Grande, one of Romero's closest friends, as he traveled to Mass. They gunned down the priest and his escort, rolling the corpses to the side of the road. The killings had a profound effect on the archbishop. Standing over Grande's body that night, forced to personally confront the dictatorship's brutality, Romero chose to take action. Two days after Grande's murder, Romero took to the pulpit and delivered a homily that attacked the government. He detailed the countless power abuses of the dictatorship, listing murders and torturings that the censored press had never reported. The speech was broadcast on nationwide radio, reaching an estimated 71% of rural Salvadorans. Romero's sudden shift from quiet neutrality to fiery support of the poor and the press shocked left and right-wing groups across the country. The Archbishop continued to give speeches that urged Catholics to stand up for the rights of the poor and to protest the government's wanted killings. He published monthly pastoral letters and drew a massive crowd for his Sunday sermons. Romero had become a radical leader for human rights within the Catholic Church. Oscar Romero is the definition of a leader. This is what leadership looks like and you know he's one of the greatest leaders in human history to my mind. And why do I say that was because he inspired a whole generation of priests to speak out publicly for peace and justice. Mid-level clergymen, galvanized by the Archbishop's call for a politically active church, forsook neutrality and took action to promote social justice. At the Jesuit Academy, Father Segundo Montes formed a legal aid office that worked tirelessly to protect the rights of the poor. In the countryside, a group of 150 Catholic nuns and priests inspired by the Archbishop's teachings, held a hunger strike to protest government human rights abuses. While many clergymen welcomed the change in the Church's mission, 
all but one of Romero's fellow bishops turned their backs on his calls for solidarity. The archbishop responded by dedicating sections of his homilies to the reluctant clergy. He listed the names of those killed in the past week, forcing his opponents to consider the reality of life for the impoverished Salvadorans. This rhetoric eventually aligned the conservative bishop's ideologies with his mission of support for the poor and oppressed. As time passed, the archbishop's speeches became more strongly worded. He implored Salvadoran Catholics to fight for human rights, noting that forceful insurrection was the right of the truly oppressed. On the 23rd of March, 1980, just over three years since his appointment as archbishop, Romero gave the most radical speech of his career. He called for government soldiers to lay down their arms and rebel against their commanders. I would like to make an appeal in a special way to the men of the army, to the police, to those in the barracks, he said. Brothers, you are part of your own people. You kill your own campesino brothers and sisters. And before in order to kill that a man may give, the law of God must prevail that says, Thou shalt not kill. No soldier is obliged to obey an order against the law of God. I beg you, I ask you, I order you in the name of God, stop the repression. The next day, Romero was fatally shot by a government assassin as he officiated mass at the funeral of a friend. Before Romero was archbishop, the leadership of the Catholic Church in El Salvador indirectly supported the dictatorship, preaching acceptance of the established social order. Romero's decision to officially speak out on behalf of the oppressed poor had a significant impact on Salvadoran church policy. Individual Jesuits and Paris priests had long supported the poor and oppressed, but without resources, nationwide coordination, or official support, their efforts were largely in vain. The radical leadership of El Salvador's highest-ranking clergymen helped galvanize efforts across the country and gave the movement validity in the minds of previously unconvinced priests. With Romero's support, the campaign to defend the poor and speak out against government oppression became a nationwide mission of the greater church. The church, which had long supported the oligarchy, either directly or through an action, had become one of the most significant proponents of human rights in El Salvador. Romero um, charted a different course for the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church had really been in uh, connection with the elite and the rich, and it was really um, Oscar Romero that really kind of changed the focus. There had been movements prior to this taking this idea of needing to have a church that was on the side of the poor seriously, but Romero was the one who really catapulted that in El Salvador and changed the focus of the church. As Archbishop, Romero shifted the church's emphasis from one of church-state complicity to a church intent on defending its poor, Helen May Eaton wrote. For the first time, the people of El Salvador had the support of one of its institutional leaders. Today, the Catholic Church in El Salvador remains committed to promoting human rights and social justice. The current Archbishop of San Salvador, Jose Luis Escobar, is an outspoken proponent of human rights and a close adherent to Romero's teachings, stating that he deeply admires the slain Archbishop. Escobar has said that he believes it is his duty to raise his voice to defend human rights and democracy, and that it is the Church's duty to stand with the weak and poor. Oscar Romero's legacy of support for human rights within the Catholic Church lives on in the Vatican as well. Pope Francis has enacted policies that reflect Romero's teachings, calling for priests and lay leaders to collaborate in the struggle against structural causes of poverty and repression. On February 7, 2015, Francis named Romero an official Catholic martyr, calling him a personal inspiration. The Pontifical Council for the Family released a statement following the decree, saying that Romero's message stemmed directly from the Bible. These declarations signal church-wide acceptance of Archbishop Romero's once radical ideas. Oscar Romero has convinced um, the Pope you know, that, that this is kind of the path that one should take if one sees oneself as a person of faith, that one also has to take a stand against social injustice. Today, Archbishop Vecino Paliga told the New York Times, Romero is an enormous help to Francis' vision of the church. Their voices sound like one, a poor church for the poor. Oscar Romero's leadership of El Salvador's Catholic priests and laity shifted the church from a position of complicity with the dictatorship to a policy of defending the oppressed. His legacy of support for human rights and social justice lives on in the Catholic Church to this day.